If your business needs a help desk app and you currently have a subscription to Office 365 or Microsoft 365, I'm gonna walk you through a very simple solution that's also free to go ahead and get that set up. Hi guys, my name is Michael, and today I'm gonna to walk you through setting up a simple help desk app using Power Apps, SharePoint, and Power Automate. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is talk a little bit about licensing and the other requirements that you need. Then I'll walk you through the app, the SharePoint list, and the Power Automate flow. And then lastly, we'll talk about some simple ways to customize and make this app even better. Before we dive in, I do wanna remind you to like the video and subscribe down below. Um, I am gonna be coming out with a lot of other videos based on these Power Apps templates, so you definitely wanna stay tuned so you don't miss them. So as far as requirements, uh, pretty much any Office or Microsoft 365 license that you have, if it comes with SharePoint online, it will also come with Power Apps and Power Automate. And those are the three things that we need for this Help Desk app. Uh, so if you wanna be sure, you can go to office.com, and then if you come down here and click on All Apps, it will show you all of the apps that come with your subscription. And you can see we've got Power Apps, Power Automate, and SharePoint. Those are the three that we'll be using. So uh, another thing that you need as far as permissions is with SharePoint, you need the ability to create a list. Um, it would also probably be good if you had the ability to create a site or if you're able to contact your administrator to help with that. Um, but we do need a site, a list, and then anyone who's gonna be using this app, we need to make sure that they have permission to the site, preferably member, member permission. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the app. So this app is built for mobile. That's why the orientation is um, vertical. Uh, so we come to the main screen here and we can either log in as a user or as an admin. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the user first. So the first thing that we're seeing is a list of all of our tickets. We haven't created one yet, so it's blank for now. We'll go ahead and add a new ticket. So we'll, let's see, my keyboard is sticking. That's my problem. Uh, category, this is equipment. <clears throat> Priority, uh, I'd say medium. It's not the worst, not the best. Um, my keyboard is really slowing me down. Please help. And create. It says my, it's been submitted. Go ahead and click on that, and it'll take me to that list again. And now we see the ticket. Let's go ahead and create one more. Uh, this time it's a software issue. So let's say Word is not opening. Dun, dun, dun. Priority. It's low. I'm not doing a lot with Word in the next couple days. Um, for some reason, the app is crashing. All right. So there we go. And now I have two tickets for two different problems. Um, so with either of these tickets, if I need to change something, I can come in and click Edit. <clears throat> it will show me some information I didn't see before. Uh, so here it will tell me when it was created. My name is uh, you know, created by, modified. Uh, the status is not started, percent zero, and not assigned to anyone. So these are things that an admin can change, but I cannot. I can update the description, category, or priority if I want to do that, but we'll cancel for now. The other thing I can do is delete. So all of a sudden my keyboard's good. I'm going to come in here, delete that ticket. It's gone, and now it doesn't show up on my list. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the admin view. So I'm going to go ahead and log out uh, and log in as an admin. So here you will see the ticket that I just created as a user as well as a couple of other ones from different users. So now as an admin, I can come in and edit a ticket and I'm able to change uh, some of these settings that you saw earlier. So for example, I could set the status to in progress. You could say, yeah, it's already 10% done. Uh, go ahead and assign it to Mitch because he's really good at Microsoft Word. And if I want, I can uh, say something in the description. I can say this is from an admin. Uh, we'll get started on it. <clears throat> and update. So that updates the ticket. You'll see that that information has changed here. And if I were to go and re-log in as a user, it's all changed and up to sync. Um, so where is this data being stored? It's being stored in SharePoint in the form of a list. So I'd like to show you that now. So here's our list. 
Uh, so all the information that you just saw in Power Apps, this is where it's saved. So we've got title, description, category, percent, priority, all the same stuff that you just saw. This is where it's stored. So pretty straightforward. Um, <clears throat> one other important component of this app is email notifications. So if we go into my email, we see we've got a couple here. Uh, so the first one is to me as a user saying, hey, there's a, I'm sorry, it's from me as, a, as an admin saying there's a new ticket for you. So it tells me the priority of the ticket. I can even click on this link to go see it in SharePoint. Uh, I've got two of these emails because two new tickets were created. This last email is to me as a user saying that my ticket is being worked on, uh, the ticket that I just submitted. So those are the emails that you get. And then finally, the thing that's powering the emails is Power Automate. And this is what it looks like in case you've never seen it. Uh, it's also called Flow. So it's just a simple series of steps uh, it's saying when something happens in Power Apps, find this item in SharePoint, figure out what the status is, and then based on the status, send an email. So this is where all that information is um, basically for each status. So let's go ahead and talk about customizations because one of the really powerful things about using a platform like Power Apps is with it being a low code platform, that means there's many things you can customize or tweak. Um, so let's actually, before we get to Power Apps, let's talk about SharePoint really quick. So basically any of the fields that we have uh, default in our app, we can either change them or add to them or take away from them. Uh, for example, we could add some more fields. So if we, we for example, really cared about uh, the department of the user, we could add that as a field. Or if we really cared about the due date, you know, when they're hoping that the ticket's resolved by, we could add that. Or we could even have a field for tags. Like let's say um, Matt is really the go-to guy when it comes to monitor problems. So if there was a problem specifically with monitors, we could tag monitor and maybe have some logic that directs him to be the person it's assigned to. Uh, we can also change options within each of these categories. So, um, uh, for example, with the category, uh, right now we really only have two options, which is an equipment issue or a software issue, but we could really make those anything we want. Um, another good example is task status. Let's say there's, I think default, it comes with four or five, but we have our own series of step statuses we want to set easy. And the cool thing is any changes that we make in SharePoint will automatically um, find themselves in the Power App as well. So that's SharePoint. Uh, let's go ahead and look at Power Apps. So one of the first things we can change or customize is actually how this uh, list of tickets looks. So we can pretty much change anything visually that you're seeing uh, here on the ticket itself. So if there's some different information we want or some images or anything else, we can include those. Uh, we can also, on this page, add the ability to search, filter, or sort. Right now, none of this is here because it's pretty basic, but all of those things are pretty easy to add in. Um, if we actually go to the screen where we uh, see a ticket, again, anything that, that you see can be easily changed. We can um, add things, we can take things away. All those changes we made in SharePoint will show up right here. Um, we can also, this is a change I would make if this was my app. Uh, it's a little clunky having the description where the user writes one sentence and then the admin might write another sentence. So if it was me, I would actually add more of a messaging based system. So each thing that's entered would show up as a message and it might even have who the author is and the timestamp. So you'd have a nice little messaging system and that's pretty easy to do as well. From the admin side, <clears throat> I think it'd be kind of cool with this, uh, again, having the ability to filter the list of tickets, like I'd love to see the tickets just assigned to me, or to see the tickets that are high priority, or to see tickets based on status, like which, which ones are not even started, and I need to get to those first. Um, I also think it'd be kind of cool uh, to have the ability to assign to multiple people. Right now, and by default, you can just put one person, but. Uh, Lots of things like that that are just really easy to change, which is one of the cool things about this. Uh, lastly, let's go and take a look at the Power Automate. Um, so this has to do with the email notification. 
So pretty much anything as far as how the email is crafted, we can easily change. Um, for example, I would like to include probably a lot more information in this. So that's easy to do in the body of the email. We can, any details you wanna include, we can do that. It'd also be nice to maybe change some of these conditions. Like if a case uh, goes from not started to in progress, I'd kind of love to have an email sent to who it's assigned to so that they know they have a new ticket. Another thing that I would change is right now, the link to the email goes to the SharePoint list, which is okay, but where I really want people going is to the Power App, uh, the ticket within Power Apps itself. So that's a change we could do as well, where they click on the hyperlink, takes them right to the ticket in Power Apps. So that pretty much wraps up the video. Um, we're gonna put a few things in the description below. Uh, first, we'll put a link to uh, how to actually set up this app, and there's also a really nice video that walks you through all of it. Honestly, for me, it took 15, 20 minutes. Um, so it's really not that hard just to get this basic bare bones app set up. Um, we're also gonna put in the description a link to the Power Apps licensing guide, just in case you have any questions about exactly which subscriptions give you access to Power Apps. Um, I'd also like to show you again really quick, let's go back to that Power Apps home screen. I would encourage you, you know, just kind of take a look as I'm scrolling, but I would encourage you to, you know, take a look at some of these other apps. If, if any of these things are things that you felt have been a little bit lacking, um, maybe even you're still doing a, a pencil paper trail for any of these things, Power Apps is a great way to get started. And these templates are, I mean, pretty powerful for what they are and, and for being free. Um, and one thing that I'm gonna be doing is creating a lot of videos on each of these apps coming up in the future. So you'll definitely wanna keep an eye on our channel for that. And if you find yourself having any questions or you're really interested in some of those customizations I talked about, please feel free to reach out because we definitely love to help you. I think that's it for now. And uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.